What's the most unsettling thing you've ever found in your life? I remember once I found a family photo in my old basement and it wasn't our family. Yeah, that was fun to figure out as a group. Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and here are the top 10 most unsettling discoveries in recent history. Number 10, T-Rex arms. All right, mystery solved, folks. Have you ever wondered why a T-Rex, one of the biggest, baddest dinosaurs in the game, have you ever wondered why their arms are so tiny? What went wrong here? How did they get the short end of the DNA dino stick? Well, scientists may have an answer. They've spent decade after decade debating T-Rex arms, which first of all, it's a great job. And now at first, previous hypotheses suggested that their arms may have been used as pectoral claspers during mating or to get off the ground after falling over, both hilarious in the sense. But even so, there's other parts of the body that would have been used in that scenario. So it's almost like they're still useless. New studies this year suggest that these arms getting smaller was actually perfect. The arms of the T-Rex shriveled because there is an evolutionary advantage to keeping them out of the way. T-Rex, yeah, they would eat in groups. So more often than not, these idiots would bite their friend's arms off or their own. Yeah, so they shriveled them up, kept them out of the way. Bob's your uncle. You ever bite your own finger while you're eating food? That's a personal embarrassing moment. Number nine, Garfield phones. Okay, hello, look who's calling. The Garfield crave began back in 1978. Jim Davis brought to life this lasagna-loving, Monday-hating cats, the OG grumpy cat, really. And as his popularity grew, of course, so did his merch. A Garfield couch with eyes, that's really anybody wants, right, in life? But the last thing you would expect to find floating in the ocean are probably Garfield phones. Also, yes, I said phones, not one phone. Thousands of Garfield phones have been slowly washing up ashore in France for 30 years now. Imagine standing there, looking at the ocean, thinking about your ex, pondering life, and then a Garfield phone washes up. You're like, ugh, fine, I'll call her. This began in the 80s, but until recently, we didn't know where they were coming from, which is pretty jarring. A farmer read about these phones in an article and how they could, you know, be hurting the environment, and he came forward and admitted he knew about the shipping container full of Garfield phones. Rene Morvin, this guy's been sitting on a national treasure, this huge secret. He says in the 80s, he found the shipping container in a sea cave, which, I mean, imagine thinking you found some sort of lost billions worth of treasures, but it's just this If the ocean gives you plastic phones, you answer it. Number eight, holes. If you have trypophobia, you may want to skip this one, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty, it's pretty odd. Off the coast of Big Sur, California, a survey revealed about 15,000 holes, all underwater, just on the ocean floor, for some reason. They're all the same size, and they all measure up to be around 11 meters wide and one meter deep. Now the team at Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, they found 15,000 of these, and they found 5,000 more that are even larger. They're called micro depressions, and the big ones are called pockmarks. Initially, scientists thought that methane under the seafloor, it was just coming out to say hello, maybe that's the reason for these indents. And then they, of course, left a crater. Rovers went down there, tests were done, turns out that's not the case. No methane is involved. In fact, there hasn't been any methane down there for 50,000 years. These MDs are essentially garbage trails and now there's deep sea creatures living in them. It's like a little underwater neighborhood. It's cute. They even found a whale skull just laying in one of them. Can you imagine that? Imagine being a crab and coming home to that. I'd move. I'd move to the next micro depression immediately. Number seven, Amelia Earhart remains. The first woman to fly across the Atlantic was well on her way to setting even more groundbreaking records, but her plane tragically disappeared over the Pacific in 1937. And it's since been a great mystery where the final resting place of Amelia Earhart now is. But we may have actually found her remains back in 1940 without really knowing. They were found on the Pacific island of Nakumaroro. Now the initial examination of these remains were reported to be that of a man. That was the general idea in 1941. Come 2018, however, now we have a different idea. Could it be? Researcher Richard Johns took another look at the long lost remains and since those days, we've learned more about Amelia Earhart. Photos have since surfaced online. So we compared the bone measurements to her body type and they're pretty sure that they found our missing aviator. Number six, abandoned whiskey. This one's pretty fun, dare I say, a little exciting? I don't know. An explorer found crates in a hut belonging to another explorer, that of Ernest Shackleton. You've probably heard of him before, it's pretty huge. Anything belonging to our boy Ernest Shackleton is a treasure, especially when it's frozen bottles of scotch. That's pretty lovely. It's probably the best case scenario, really, evidently. It's 2010 and you find 100 year old frozen scotch that Ernest Shackleton once drank. 
What do you do? Do you drink it? Do you save it? A little bit of both. I would do a bit of both. This may be the best discovery on this list, or at least the happiest. It's been locked up, of course, since, you know, such a historical find, but you'll be happy to know that a sample was given to Scottish distiller White and McKay. They're now studying this recipe to try and bring it back to life, which is amazing. Number five, surprise Nikes. I threw shoes on my holiday wish list this year, and every year for that matter. Nothing like a nice fresh pair of sneaks. Sometimes you find the perfect shoes, and sometimes they find you. In the mid-90s, a shipment of Nike shoes heading to the US was lost during this crazy storm. Around five shipping containers fell into the sea, so later on, 61,000 pairs of shoes just started to drift towards the west coast. Just all mar just making their little way, just slowly but surely. That's terrifying. People saw shoes in the water. Do you know how afraid I would be if a shoe brushed against my shoulder while I was swimming? My brain would go to the darkest places. So scary. These shoes luckily didn't belong to anybody, but they did all have the same serial number by chance. So what started as this ocean mystery ended up working out for the better. Nike lost a lot of money and we tracked the shoe's journey. So now we oddly learned more about our ocean currents. Well, Nike lost money. Win-win. Number four, 2021 rocket. Remember last year in May when a large piece of space junk was just gonna crash land somewhere on Earth and we had no idea where it was gonna hit? Possible Avengers level threat. We're all just looking at Twitter, refreshing, like, mm, where's it gonna be? Where did it land? Well, at the time, this was one of the biggest pieces of human-made space junk to ever crash towards Earth, so it was a little jarring. They said it would land in New York or New Zealand. One of the two, okay, gamble, let's do it, 50-50. The debris came from the lost March 5B rocket and landed in the Indian Ocean, luckily, with most of it burning up upon re-entry. Now, usually when rockets discard pieces, it's done so strategically, falling into the ocean, normally the Atlantic, in a graveyard, this was not supposed to happen. Thankfully, it didn't land in New York. That, again, would have been terrifying. It would look like Loki's arrived. What's, what's that, is that a meteor? Are we done? Number three. Raining spiders. Back in 2015, and you guessed it, Australia, residents of Goulburn woke up to the town just being caked in spiders. This is my nightmare. This is, I think, yeah, this is my absolute biggest fear. Everything was webbed. They were tiny black spiderlings all over the place. Resident Ian Watson told reporters that, quote, when I looked up at the sun, it was like this tunnel of webs going up for a couple of hundred meters into the sky. End quote. Also, delete memory, thanks. Rick Vedder, an entomologist at the University of California at Riverside, says that many spiders are just ballooning around us, but thankfully, they all don't do it at the same time, like this situation. Yeah, this is happening all the time, so keep your heads up, or down. I'd rather not look. Number two, giant pipes. Back in 2017, these massive industrial pipes washed up along the shores of the northern Norfolk coast. Now, if I was swimming and I saw this thing floating towards me, I would faint. I would think it's a giant sea snake or something. I would have no idea what I was looking at. These things were massive. Terrible discovery, but again, pretty exciting. I didn't realize how big these were at first, and then I zoomed in. I think I have some mechanophobia now. Where did they come from? Well, these pipes were lost at sea following an accident on an Iceland shipping container, which resulted in 500 meter long pipes coming loose. Yeah, that's so scary. Luckily, you can see these things coming, but that's still jarring. I would think it's a submarine emerging out of the water. God. The company that produced them, Pipe Life, Great name, rather fitting. They urged the curious to stay far away. Do not approach them. You can see them coming because they're the size of buildings, so they can obviously easily crush a human being. These ocean pipes have a diameter of two meters, and the longest one that washed up on the beach was 500 meters long. Number one, three kittens. Back in 2020, an oil worker named Drayton Dewich found three kittens all frozen to the ground near Drayton Valley. They were alive, but just, you know, very cold. It was mid-January, everything is frozen. This was near an oil well that he'd been working on, right? Those are always freezing cold. On Facebook, they posted about how the three kittens were all males, dewormed and living under the same roof now, and they were much warmer. He just found three little pets and brought them home. He got them out of the ice by using coffee to melt the ice. That's amazing. I said it once before and I'll say it again, coffee saves lives. He's like, oh yeah, look at that. They're alive. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. We'll end on that weird note. Awesome. See you next time on Bumblebee.